Hello everyone. I'm just doing a little crime rant because I'm really getting tired of it, y'all. And I just have to get it out. So I'm going to rant for a few minutes. Oh, gosh. I want to just say, pray for New Orleans because it's not good. New Orleans is at a state of emergency at this point because I don't want to even say it can't get worse because it can. I don't want to even say that because it can. Every day, at least four to five people are getting killed. Every day. Every day. It's always something. And it's like, when, when are we going to get help? When, when is someone going to say, you know what? Let's send the National Guards to New Orleans. Let's send them some help. Like, what else has to happen? Does a politician have to get hurt before we can, you know, get some help down here? Like, I'm not understanding. Like, the police officers, they're doing the best they can. And I'm just going to keep it like that. Because they're working from like a 50% capacity. 50% capacity. That's not enough. They don't have enough officers to man the streets. They don't have enough officers to work the cases. I mean, but they're doing the best that they can with what they have. And that's not much. New Orleans has been listed. <laughs> this is crazy. New Orleans has become the homicide capital of the country. That's crazy. Wow. Wow. We have a 46% surge in homicides per 100,000 people. New Orleans is not that big. I mean, we have the East Bank and we have the West Bank, which I'm on the Best Bank. I'm on the West Bank, but still, it's not that big. Not comparison to New York or Atlanta or Los Angeles, but New Orleans. We are the murder capital of the United States. Do you guys realize what that means? That's scary. <laughs> New Orleans has surpassed St. Louis, which St. Louis led the nation with a 45% homicide rate per 100,000 people. By comparison, they have 18 homicides in Chicago per 100,000 people and 3.5 out of 100,000 people in New York. Come on, y'all. 3.5 in New York. And we are at 46 in New Orleans. Are you kidding? It's like, I, I don't know what needs to be done at this rate because it's just bad but it's to the point now where i don't want to even go outside because i'm a free-spirited person i mean i don't go a lot of places but you know i like to go different places like by myself <laughs> but i'm i don't want to go nowhere because i mean i don't know what could happen you know just because i'm not in a club or i'm not in a a high volume crime area, I mean, it could still come to me. It's like you're just not safe nowhere. And you could give, if someone's coming up to rob you and they ask you for your keys, your purse or whatever, you can give them everything you, everything they ask for, you can give it to them. But guess what? They're going to still kill you. So you can give them everything that you, everything that you have on you here, take my money, take my keys, take this and that. They're going to take it but they still going to kill you. That's crazy. Man, when I tell you, it is just I don't know y'all. It's, it's it's just really scary. And it's like the police they doing the best they can. 
but they don't have enough help because they're working at a 50% capacity. So basically, we need over a hundred percent capacity, if you ask me, but they're working at a fifty percent, and it might it might even be lower than that now. So just imagine they don't even have enough officers to man the streets and work cases. So basically, the criminals, oh, they're living it up. That's why our crime rate has skyrocketed because we don't have enough cops on the streets. We don't have enough people out there patrolling to make sure those areas are safe. We don't have enough people. And the ones that we do have, they're being overworked. And you know what happens with that. After a while, they're going to quit because they're tired. They're coming in every day to work, but they're being overworked because they don't have enough people. And so what you end up doing is you burn, you burn out the good people. They get burnt out. They want to come to work. They want to make a difference, but they get burnt out because they're only human. Mr. Jones can get shot right on the street. And Miss Sybil, she can get hurt right here. Hope Mr. Jones is okay because we might not be able to get to you like within an hour. We might be able to get to you like in an hour. But we got to take him and Sybil first because she was the first one that called us. But we coming, Mr. Jones. Hopefully you don't bleed out. We're going to get that when we can. And the same goes for the paramedics. We don't have enough of them. They're being overworked. And they have a very rigorous schedule. The paramedics, they are getting slammed. Just like a couple of months ago, the little lady, God bless her soul, in New Orleans, it was like a 14-year-old, a 16-year-old, and a 15-year-old, I believe. I think, no, actually one of the kids were 17. They robbed this little lady of her car. She actually gave them the car. But they couldn't wait to get the car. So they actually drove off while her arm was still stuck in the car. They dragged this poor little lady for like, probably like a half a mile. Her arm basically was ripped off. This lady was alive for at least 45 minutes. But the ambulance EMS didn't get there till like an hour later and she was gone. I mean, it's not that they were being careless. They were working another case. They couldn't stop what they was doing and leave one victim and go help someone else. They had to take care of the person they had. And it's the same thing with the cops, you know? Something happens, you're gonna be waiting a while you know, before you could get help. So that's just like saying, okay, well, somebody could be trying to rob me and trying to get in my house. I'm trying to fight them off. And I'm calling the cops because please come hurry up because they outside my door. They trying to kick my door in. That's going to be on me to maintain until they get there. It might be an hour, but just do the best you can until we get there. And that's what it is. And it's so crazy. You guys, like the other day, when I tell you, I was just so puzzled. I'm like, are you serious? It was raining cats and dogs. Now, when I say cats and dogs, we were having emergency alerts. Telling us to stay away from the windows. If you hear, this, you know, the, the hurricane, I mean, the tornado sound, go to the nearest, you know, center place of your home or your dwelling or whatever. So, of course, I'm hearing sirens outside. But I'm thinking, you know, it's raining. It was, I want to say it was during the evening, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm thinking, okay, it's raining. People are, you know, driving, probably getting in accidents because it was really raining a lot. And of course, this way, when it rains, we flood real fast. So I'm hearing all the sirens and stuff. So I'm like, why? People just need to learn to stay home when it's raining outside. You know, like when the weather's really bad, if you don't have to be out, stay home. Well, baby, when I tell you that's not what it was, I later find out there was a shootout, like right across the street from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While it was thundering and lightning and storming, they was outside having a full gun battle in the rain. 
And I'm like, damn, the guns can still shoot. Like, you know, if the gun get wet, I guess it can still go off, right? Apparently it can. These suckers were outside shooting, having a shootout in a storm. They weren't inside or they weren't in their cars. They was like outside, fully wet, soaked, drenched, having a shootout. How can you even see the target? How can you see it's storming outside? Like you wiping your face. The the rain is, is come on. How can you see? It didn't stop them. There was one little guy that got killed. And I was like, wow. These fools are out here shooting in a storm. <laughs> like it was that drastic, right? Like y'all just really had to go get him right then and there, right? Like, y'all couldn't even wait till the damn storm passed. Y'all had to go right out there and get it and take care of him right during the storm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, I mean, it's not even safe, man. You're in your vehicle driving. You don't have to be in a club. You don't have to go out in the bad spots. You could be on the interstate just driving to your next destination. And, hey, they pop up and they just shoot you while you're driving. We've been having a lot of those shootings lately. And that's been really like mind boggling to me because they can't even wait till you pull off the interstate. They see your car and they just blazing right then and there. At least this year, I want to say we have had at least five or six interstate killings this year. Yeah. And of course, most of the people that were hit were the wrong people. You know, it's always the girlfriend in the boyfriend's car. And, you know, opposition sees the car. Oh, well, that's, that's the car, so we're going to shoot up. No, the person, your target is not even in that car. That's his girlfriend. That's his baby mama. That might not be even him, but it's a car like him. But they don't care. Oh, that car look like him. Well, we're going to just shoot just in case it is him. But if it's not him, my bad. But just in case it's him, we're going to blaze. And that's what they do. And it's so sad, y'all. One of the stories that I'm going to be working on next, and I just want to talk briefly about it because I wanted to talk about it when it first happened. And I just, you know, trying to get this channel together. I'm still trying to fill things out and doing everything by myself. So I'm trying to figure it out the best way I can. Um, I wanted to do the story on um, Oliver Thomas's niece who was brutally shot down, which she's still alive. And I pray that she does live, but um, she was shot in the face and in the head. However, the young lady she was with, Paige, Paige didn't make it. And my heart hurts for that child. Paige was so beautiful. She's 19 years old. She was a beautiful little girl. Oh my gosh, she was gorgeous. And they were just sitting at a tire shop, just waiting to get the tire changed. And somebody just pull up. They shot at least 40 times. 40 times. Paige was killed on the scene. Oliver Thomas is niece. She's in the hospital in critical condition. She's fighting for her life. I pray that she makes it, but she was hit in the head and in the face. So I don't know, you know, if she's going to make it or not, but I pray that she does. And if she does make it, you know, what type of quality of life will she have with those types of injuries? You know, you don't know. But I say that to say, man, these girls were minding their own business. They were just waiting to get a tire change. And what's so crazy is within the same area at another tire shop, another man was like just killed like a couple of days before then. It's like, God, what's going on at the tire shops? What's going on? You can't go get your tie changed now because you're going to get shot up? What's going on? Now, the girls, they were in, I believe the girl was in her boyfriend's car. So the suspects, I guess, probably thought it was him. And they just went and started shooting, but it wasn't him. But even still... Like, what happens to talking to people when you don't like something? Or, or if you don't like a person, just stay away from them. Why you got to go shoot up a person? Like, it's just so, gosh, it's just so hard, y'all. It, it's just hard to even, because I can't even understand. Like, I can't even understand why people do the things they do. Like, it's so hard to even, 
I can't even imagine how they thinking. And it's like, it's just beginning to be like a normal thing. You know, recently my daughter was home and I was sitting down and I heard gunshots and I'm like, okay, well, I know it's not uh, 4th of July or nothing like that. It's no type of holiday or nothing like that, but I'm hearing, you know, so I know what it was and she like looked and I was like, oh, it's somebody shooting or whatever. And it was like, I said it as if it was, oh, it's normal. It's somebody out there shooting. They, they always doing it. That's not normal. But that's the new normal down here. There's some other stories I also want to touch on. Uh, one of the stories I did, um, I did a piece on it. It's like my second story. And I was pretty excited about that. But I wanted to focus more on that too because I really believe that deserves a lot of attention. And that's the stories with the Ville brothers. And I just want to bring so much attention to the Ville brothers, y'all, because those boys, they were good boys. They didn't do anything. They were good kids. They weren't out there in the streets. They had a good upbringing. And someone just gunned them down. Brian was killed first on February 13th. And then after that, Brian and Brad, then after that, Brandon and Bradley, they were killed on February 20th within the same week, within miles apart. Not even a mile apart. I want to say they were like killed in less than a mile apart within the same week. So this mother and father had to bury their three kids within one week. And these boys were good boys. I know some people be like, oh, what do you mean? No, these were really good boys. They weren't into drugs. They weren't selling drugs. They weren't out in the streets. They were good. Like they were tall. You know, people always call them little gentle giants because <laughs> they were tall. But these boys were good, y'all. They were really good kids. And, you know, that's that's rare because, you know, you always find that somebody's got a little something going on. But, no, these boys were really good. They weren't out there like that. And these boys were, they were gunned down like animals. <sighs> and there is no lead, you know. I believe the suspects, one of the suspects' car, they did find um, one of the cars that was involved in one of the shootings. But they weren't able to recover any fingerprints from it. Or either the fingerprints didn't match what was in the database or whatever. So it's a cold case. So they don't know who did it or why, you know. And it's so hard to even who who were their enemies because everyone loved them, you know. Well, apparently not everyone. But I don't know, y'all. It's just, it's sad. And I just really... I just really hope things could change. But as of now, it's not good. It's not good. And it's like, at this point, I don't even know what has to happen for it to get enough attention, attention for people to be like, okay, well, like, hold up. They really do need help. I don't know what has to happen. I don't know what else. And like I said, you know, the police, they're doing the best that they can with what they have, you know? So I'm hoping that something happens now because unfortunately, Oliver Thomas, he's the councilman at large. His niece was involved in the shooting. She wasn't killed, but she was. she's the one that's in critical condition. And I'm just hoping that now you know, he'll light up a fire and really, cause he was, he's been pushing for us to get help, but I'm just hoping now that, you know, he'll be, he'll fight even harder to get us the help that we need because we need it. So I don't know. It's just real scary. And just, you know, I was listening earlier and there was a murder right there on Ames and in Marrero. I want to say this weekend, at least three people were killed. And I think they were very young. One was like 17 and if I'm not mistaken, 19 or something like that. 
a girl and a boy, they were found deceased in someone's yard. They were gunned down and I guess they were walking together and someone seen them and shot them and they were found um, Saturday deceased. And I think Sunday, someone was also murdered in the same area. And it's like, it's really starting to become the normal and that's not normal. And I just, I just really wish that somebody would do something to bring upon change because right now at the rate that we're going, it's not good. And I don't want to live my life in fear, afraid to go outside because, you know, people doing stupid stuff and, and for a reason we don't know. But I don't know, y'all. I mean, all I can say is just pray. All we can do is pray at this point. Just pray. Because the world we live in right now is horrible. It's like you can't trust anybody. You know, people have motives and stuff. Not everybody, but you just really have to be on your P's and Q's. And it's like a bad way to exist, you know? But that's all my little rant is, you guys. Thank you so much if you're listening. Thank you if you stayed throughout the whole video. I just needed to rant because... This crime thing is really, it's really too much. And I just be having so many thoughts in my head. So now that I have this little platform, I don't have to just keep it all bottled up in my head. I can just come and express how I feel on this platform. So if you guys stayed and listened to my little rant, I want to thank you guys so much for coming to my channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know where you're from. Let me know what type of issues you have in your city. Like, do you have any crime, any violence that's going on in your city? Like, what type of issues are you guys facing? You know, telling you what it is down here in New Orleans. So, all right, you guys. So, please stay safe. Stay prayed up. Watch your surroundings. Check on your family and friends. Be safe out there. Bye. Thank you.